Hey everybody, Mandis Buckle here with Maximum Muscle Report with the 2019 Arnold Classic Classic Physique Preview Show alongside co-host Jose Raymond, Nate Spears. Fellas, how you doing? Fabulous. Good. Yeah. Not too bad. Just getting excited for the Arnold. It's pretty close now. Man, it's 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 right around the corner. Um, classic physique is gonna be something. You know, we, we, we don't have a lot of the, the top five guys from from the Olympia this past year. Um, but a lot of times that makes things a little more interesting because it, it gives that second crop of guys an opportunity to make a name for themselves, break into the top five. Um, Nate, who are you, who are you looking uh, for to see next weekend? Well, the thing I really like about this lineup is – with open bodybuilding, I'm not going to say it's sort of like you already know who the top five is, but it can be pretty pretty easy to predict. Where here, it can be pretty interchangeable, you know what I mean? Uh, it's such a mixed crop of guys, and with the height and the weight restriction, it sort of keeps everyone level playing field for the most part. Um, but, I mean, for the most part, I think everyone watching <clears throat> this lineup is sort of seeing it as the George Peterson show. He plays top three at the Olympia. He's been on the scene now for not a veteran, but you know, now that it's been established for a couple of years, the class George has definitely has a big name. So I think it's sort of he's coming in as a guy to watch for. And then you got the Keon, who's really good. He's really big on the Instagram and sort of coming up as far as like a big name in the future. And then you got Courage Opera, who's really good. He plays top ten in the Olympia. But other than that, the guys are pretty scarce as far as big names who's placed well i mean a couple of these guys have won shows but i mean no one where it's really oh man there's a c-bum or you know what i mean uh brian or you know what i mean it's pretty much george is the the name coming into it yeah absolutely i think that the three of us chatted a little bit before um jose i think we we, we all pretty much has have george as, as a consensus front runner for this thing going in or his show to win um who else are you looking for for next weekend? Well, George is definitely, um, you know, he's top three two years in a row at the Olympia. Um, he's just showed consistent consistency, and he's got a crazy amount of muscle on him, too. He's just great to look at. So I love George. Um, but that being said, there's any there's a few guys that could come in and, and beat him that have more of the quote-unquote classic look. Yeah. You know, George could easily be mistaken for a 212 guy. Right. Um, you know, as, as this kid, Keon Pearson, um, you know, we, we spoke about him earlier. He's unbelievable, unbelievable structure. Um, and, and I believe his condition has come a long way since we last saw him in uh, Tampa. Right. Uh, where he was uh, second. Yeah, he was yes. second to Henry Pierre. Right. Yep, yep. And if he had been in crazy condition there, he could have won that show. So, um you know, I, I'm interested to see what he's going to look like at 100. Mm. And uh, you know, say that that was his that was Tampa was his debut as well. I don't yeah. think very many people know that. I know you and I were talking about it in Tampa. Um, you know, you had Henry um, above and beyond everybody else as a clear cut winner, and I I had agreed with you that Henry won. But I love the fact that they brought uh, Keon and, and Henry back out. You, you could just see he wasn't quite ready then, but I, I like when they bring two or three guys out to to take another look. You could see where this kid was headed, um, and he, of course he wanted to win. But again, it was his pro debut. Wow, the improvements he's made just since since August of last year. That's something. Yeah, he's, he's just got helping those physiques. Legs. He's got unbelievable taper. He's got unbelievable round muscle and, and tiny, tiny hips. So he's got it all. You just got to come in condition. If he's anything close to what George is condition-wise, then he can beat him. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be interesting. It'd be nice to see if he comes 100%. They pull those two, you know what I mean, have sort of like a battle like that would be really interesting. Yeah. Who's the rest of his camp, Nate? I, I, he's teamed up with with, with an old school, uh, uh, a legend, so to speak. Is it Flex Wheeler, I believe? Yeah, he's with Flex Wheeler now. Yeah. And I believe he's training down in Florida with someone else. I can't remember the training camp he's with. But, yeah, Flex Wheeler's helping him out, too. So yeah, that should be pretty interesting. behind him, so now he's got a little money in his pocket. So, you know, the stress of 
<laughs> of making the ends meet probably not as high as they were um, a year ago. Their job. Yeah. They're just bodybuilding full time now, which definitely can help. You know what I mean? Eat, sleep, train. Right. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Okay. I also like, I mean, a lot of guys, sort of forget about him. We talked about him a little bit, was Panix. He's been around on the scene for a while, but he's someone I think, he doesn't have the same muscle as George, but his conditioning is pretty similar. He's got that really dry, hard, separated. You could see like muscle fibers. You know what I mean? He moves and he sort of has that Kai Green esque of like moving and you see the muscle just coming to life. Um, not as crazy muscle wise as George, but a guy that could sneak in there that a lot of guys maybe not think on the radar. Um, but yeah, he's a guy I really like. Absolutely. I could see Panics in the top five. He's got that m muscle maturity. Yeah. A lot of these guys are, are older than you would think. You know, they've been around for many years competing. They were competing in bodybuilding, so they've kind of honed their skill of how to get in shape. And, and once they do, that old man muscle, it just looks different than the young kids, you know. So when he's in shape, he's going to be a threat for sure. And, and speaking of old, Danny Hester, he, he's, he's one of my favorites, man. Uh, I don't know how he's going to look next to those other names that we, that we mentioned, but um, it wouldn't surprise me. I think he was overlooked in a few shows recently, and I, I think he can be a top six guy, top five guy, if he nails it. Once a champion, always a champion, right? You, you right. always have to give kudos and respect. Once you've won, you know, an Arnold or, or an Olympia, Danny Hester, I mean, we all know the, the first ever classic physique, Mr. Olympia, you're always a champ. Um, so you always got to look out for that guy, no matter where he's at, whether he's, you know, supposedly near the end of, of the rope or, or not. Um, so good luck, Danny. It, it'll be interesting. Um, it's a lot of young guys, though, uh, on the rise. You know, we've got Courage Opara, Wesley Visser, uh, Charles Curtis. The list really goes on and on as we're starting to see this, this division really take shape and form now the last few years, which just makes it that much more exciting. Um, Jose, I, I think the thing that I've noticed the biggest change in is a lower body development. You know, when, when Classic first came out, you heard a lot of men's physique guys talking about, okay, well, um, I'm outgrowing the men's physique. I'm going to I'm gonna really train legs hard for, for the next year, year and a half, and jump into Classic and, and do well. And you know, it, it, it takes longer than a year and a half to, right. to, to build a good set of wheels. Um, and, and you're touching on some of the old man muscle and some of the veterans of the sport who've been around a long time. Did this division help resurrect some careers? Did this thing prolong some careers? Um, because you seem to have the two ends of the spectrum. You've got a lot of veterans here now. We've got, you know... A decent list of names of veterans who've been around a long time. A lot of young guys. You don't see a whole lot of right in the middle. Um, and as we see the leg development, you know, coming coming to fruition, that's a glaring weakness for a lot of these these cats. Um, when you say resurrect and prolong, that's precisely what it's done. And when you look at all the top names. Uh, Brian is a former 212 guy. George is a former bodybuilder. Right. Um, um, Bumstead, Bumstead turned pro as a bodybuilder. Right. Um, even Danny Hester, we hadn't heard of him in 20 years. Right. And he comes out of nowhere and wins the first Olympia. So that's exactly what it did because, oh, yeah. and, and it's exactly what the 212 did when they first started that because they were smaller guys that were great bodybuilders but were just getting lost in the shuffle. And, and that's exactly who those other guys were. Bumstead would have gotten lost in the open. Um, that's not to say he couldn't have grown into it through the years, um, but he wanted to compete immediately, and he did, and did it in, in, in physique and, and did great in class. Um, and and uh, Panix Pierre is another former two, 202 guy. Um, this kid, Keon, would have been a, would have been a bodybuilder if, if classic wasn't around so th that's exactly what it is and and i'm happy for it because if not for this class we would have missed out on a lot of great athletes a right. lot of great physiques All right it, 
you know, I, I think we're, we're going to see for the next five years or so a lot of young talent come up and go immediately into that classic physique division. Jose, we've talked about this a lot of times. Nate, you and I have mentioned this multiple times. Even most men's physique athletes, everyone wants to be a bodybuilder. Everyone. It's just about how much are they willing to suffer? Can they eat the amounts of foods they need to eat day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year? Um, the genetic predisposition. And they don't want to put in the 10, 12, 15 years that it takes. I think the next five years, you're going to see the majority of the young talent go right to classic physique and see this division really explode. What's going to happen to the other divisions when that occurs? Well, I judge locally in Boston, and it's plain as day. You might, you, you might have a total of 16 bodybuilders now at a New England show. When I first did it back in 1993, there was 100 competitors, and they were all bodybuilders. And now you have, honestly, it's in the teens, maybe 20, when, when you include masters and every, everything else. It's, it's a sad state of affairs. The, the, uh, local bodybuilding is dying because just what you said, people don't want to put in the time. They don't want to take 10 years to be able to do it. They want to get on stage and win. They want to win right now. And some of them do, but most of them don't. You know, They still need 10 years to develop a classic physique. Yeah. You know, don't sleep on the classic physique, guys. Those physiques are honed. Uh, a lot of hard work went into them. You know, when you look, and that's why the top, top, top guys are all 35 and over. Yeah. You know, George is not a young guy. No, Danny no. Hester is 50-something years old now. Um, you know, um, what's his name? Um, I can't believe how old Brian is. Brian's pushing 40. And most people don't know that. He's a young guy in that group. Right. Bumstead's the only one that's young. Right. Um, and um, Regan Grimes, Regan's leaving. Right. And, um, but Bumstead was, was blessed with a naturally unbelievable shape. Right. That, that doesn't happen for many people. He's one in a million, you know? Exactly. For the most part, you're going to take 10, 15 years to reach where these guys are at. All right. Let's get to it. Nate, is your top five? Uh, well, like I said, I mean, number one, got to go with George. And I just saw a picture of him today and next to Juan Morel, and he looks pretty freaky. You can just see that granite hard, dry. You know he's going to be on conditioning. So it should be pretty good for George. And then number two, I go with Keon, just beautiful shape. Looks almost like a 212 bodybuilder, not quite as big, but just has that full shape, <clears throat> hard muscle. You know what I mean? So if his conditioning is on, I don't really see him being below two. And then three, you go with Courage Opera. Uh, he did really well at Olympia, placing top 10 out of a lot of good names and a lot of guys. Some guys not even placing that are pretty big name, you know what I mean? So for him to do that, it's pretty well. And then number four, like I said earlier, I got Panics. He just seems to be proven time and time. For some reason, he's not really getting the name uh, out there, but he just comes with great conditioning, has that old man muscle separation, graininess that at any show you place really well with, you know what I mean? And then five, I got Charles Curtis, uh, sort of an unknown coming up. Um, just has really great conditioning, has good shape, um, and just really comes in shredded to the bone. So it should be uh, really interesting. Obviously, like I said earlier, it's sort of can be interchangeable since who on who comes in, you know what I mean, uh, 100%, and uh, sort of could uh, change at any point. All right, guys. Hey, if you if you like what you're seeing so far, Please subscribe, like, click, make a comment down below. Let us know what you're thinking. Jose, your top five. All right, it's going to be very similar to Nate's. Um, I think it's time for George to win you know, a big show. He's been top three at the Olympia two years running, and I think he's going to win this one. I think if Keon is 100% conditioned, he's going to be top two, if not better. But um, I'm going with George anyway. Um, so we got Keon. I'm going to go with um, Panics in third. I think he's that good. Yeah, I may, I may look stupid, but um, I think he is that good. And I think Charles Curtis is that good. I think he'll be in the, in the first call out. And if he gets a chance to pose with these guys, then he's going he's gonna to prove he, he belongs there. Um, then we get into the tall white guys. 
We got um, you know, it could you could flip flop with with Wesley Vissers, Jason Lowe, and and I got one more that nobody knows about. I got to give him a shout out. A fellow Bostonian, a guy by the name of Elijah Larono. He looks like an Under Armour mannequin. He he's like six one, but he look he looks two fifty. Crazy round muscles. He's only like 205, 210. Hmm. It's crazy. Remember that name, Elijah. So yeah. that's my that's my top six. And I think Elijah could sneak in there if he gets a chance. Sure. All right. Well, I, I guess across the board, we agree. George, you're our consensus. It's your show to win. Uh, we know George will be watching. Huge supporter. Uh, I've got George one. I've got Keon two, so it looks like we're across the board there as well. George and Keon one and two, Courage three, Wesley four. Uh, I I just don't see I don't see Wesley Visser not coming into this show the absolutely best than he possibly can. And if he doesn't, that that'll that'll tell us an awful lot about him. Uh, he is the Arnold Schwarzenegger lookalike. If you're not hyped up to come and do the Arnold when you're the Arnold Schwarzenegger lookalike, you're never going to be hyped up for a show. So I expect him uh, to really show up. I've got Jason Lowe and then uh, Curtis Six. So we're, we're very similar here, guys. Uh, we'll have to see how things shake out. Uh, that's about all we got. We'll see you guys next weekend. We do have an announcement to make. Uh, there's a launching of a new show. You guys will get to see the very first episode next week. Jose Raymond, myself, and Nate Spear. This will be a 20-minute show. Uh, top 10 Classic Physique Power Rankings. We'll be bringing it to you every two weeks. Uh, we'll see what happened with, with the shows uh, around the world. We'll give you what the top 10 was last week and who our current top 10 is for that week. Hopefully you guys like it. Again, if, if you like what you see, uh, like, uh, subscribe, make comments below. Until next time, guys, uh, we'll see you guys in a few days in, um, uh, in Ohio. And until next time, guys, Mandis Buckle, Nate Spear, Jose Raymond, Classic Physique, Arnold Predictions. It's a wrap. We're out. Thank <laughs> you.